Oh, myself. Huh? Uh, very good morning, uh, everyone who is present in the ingenious uh, conclave. First, let me thank uh, the Times of India for organizing such an event and inviting me to interact with you. Firstly, very happy to always interact with youngsters, students. I've always been going to many academic institutes, engineering colleges, many universities, whenever there is an opportunity. It always gives pleasure to be among us, the youngsters, where you derive a lot of energy. Youngsters are the people where you find enthusiasm, a lot of energy, and tremendous potential to work for any cause. Whenever I go to any academic institute, I come out of the institute with a lot of enthusiasm. And India particularly having a lot of youth, the percentage of youth in the Indian population being very high, right from Honorable Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi ji and everyone have lots of hopes in our youth of the country. That's why our Guru, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, decided to inspire the young and youth of this country. During his tenure as President of India and later, he has been visiting, talking to the children and youth of this country and inspiring them to work for the nation, come out with innovative solutions and make them dream to become a great man in his own field, whichever field it is, thereby contributing a lot to the nation. So it's again a very pleasant moment for me to interact with all of you, the youngsters of this country. Let me again thank profusely the organizers for conducting such an event and also giving me the opportunity to interact with you. DRDO, the Defense Research and Development Organization, started in 1958 as an inspection agency transformed itself later to a scientific research organization, later to a technology development organization, and later developing products, that's the equipment, arms, ammunition for the armed forces of India. I have seen a quantum jump in the 1980s. Before that, there have been lots of dedicated scientists who are working, who have been working in various laboratories across the country on various technologies, developing the technologies. That's the time when Dr. Arunachalam was the scientific advisor to Raksha Mantri and Dr. ABJ Abdul Kalam has come back again into DRDO from Indian Space Research Organization and assumed the charge of Director DRDL, Defense Research and Development Laboratory in Hyderabad. 
having seen the potential of the scientists who are working in the organization, even though there was no single missile which is developed by the country by the time, Dr. Kala, a courageous man, a man who has tremendous confidence in the scientists of the country, scientists of the DRDO, has taken a step that we will develop five missiles at a time, at one go. We have taken up a program called IGMDP, Integrated Guided Missiles Development Program, asking for development of five missiles, Prudhvi, Agni, Akash, Trishul and Nag, went to the government, could convince the government, it's a major step. We have to really see the courage of the person. When you don't have a single missile developed by this country, the normal attitude would have been, let me take one missile project, let me show that I'm successfully developed it, and then go for some more. Whereas Dr. Kalam had the confidence, had the faith, and had the courage to go for five missiles development simultaneously. And the government, seeing the confidence, has given the sanction, and that's where the missiles development of the country started. But I was part of the team. I joined DRDO in the 1985 and then 86 in uh, DRDL Hyderabad. When I reported to Dr. Kalam, he has posted me in the navigation group. And uh, we were working for all the missile programs. And I had the opportunity to work for the first missile of this country. Prudhvi, which is a surface-to-surface -surface missile, worked on it along with great leaders like Dr. Saraswat, General Sundaram, Dr. Avinash Chandra, Dr. Agrawal, and many Dr. Prahlada, many other people. And we had the opportunity to launch the missile, the Prudhvi missile from Sri Harikota in the year 1988. See, the condition was such, when we took the missile and kept in the launch pad, it was declared that almost it is 60% success. You have made a missile and took it to the launch pad and you are ready for launch. That itself a great success. Yes, the first mission was very successful in the year 1988. And then, that has paved the way for the intermediate range ballistic missile Agni. And it is named Agni as it goes out of atmosphere and enters into the atmosphere and experiences tremendous amount of heat. Temperatures are more than 2000, 3000 degrees centigrade. And so you have made special materials to withstand this temperature. And that Agni missile was tested from the Orissa coast, Balasur district. And the, Pope. the range was specially made for testing the missiles and this is the first missile which is tested in that range and the Agni missile was taken there and it was tested. We all stayed in the launch pad for about two months, dedicated the people worked before going and after going there tremendously. People I think for almost about eight months everybody worked till night, two o'clock, three o'clock in the office every day for about six to eight months. No Saturdays, no Sundays, people worked there and then went to the launch pad and two months they were there. And there were occasions when you are not left the launch pad for about three days without going back to your uh, uh, guest houses or rooms. And again, in the May 1989, the Agni missile was a very successful missile. It successfully tested. The leadership provided by Dr. Abdul Kalam motivated the people. People were continuously having emotions that you are making something great for the country and country is going to witness tremendous change after this. Yes, 
those successes have made a tremendous change. The Prithvi missile, which was successfully flight tested in the year 1988, has been inducted in the armor forces as first Prithvi 1, then Prithvi 2, the same missile which was launched from the ship as Thanush is also inducted. The same Agni, which came to weaponization mode, and then the country has witnessed Agni 1, Agni 2, Agni 3, Agni 4, and the long range ICBM class Agni 5, which has a range of 5,000 kilometers. Within a short period, so many missiles have been developed for the armed forces of the country. Tremendous amount of work which has been done by the great scientists dedicatedly and produced them given. And that has paid with the way for many other missiles. The surface to air missile Akash, which has again been successfully developed, inducted with armed forces, which has given more than 25,000 crores worth of orders to Bharat Dynamics Limited and Bharat Electronics Limited. Lots of private industries have come up. When the program of IGMDP started, there was no ecosystem in the country. Meaning, there are very few industries which were able to develop some product for you. The industries which were there were built to print. Meaning, you give a drawing and you will make the product or the element as per the drawing. And most of the things were done in house, in the workshops, in the laboratories of DRDL and all that. The academic institutes, yes, those institutes which were good in the country were working in their own fields. Not much of a connectivity with defense research. There were one or two institutes which were working. There have been centers established at various uh, academic institutes started grooming them towards the defense research, participated, started participating in the reviews of defense development products and developmental reviews, design reviews. And the academia also started rising the level towards the defense research. All were coming to the same plane. So number of industries started coming. That's how when you look at the Akash missile, almost 87% of the Akash missile by value were coming from private industry to BDL. BDL became the lead integrator. Beautiful system, private industries, the large infrastructure based DPSUs working together, 87% coming from the private industries. That's how the system has come up. The production rate has gone up tremendously. Add the confidence that we will be able to produce any missiles what you want. The quantities. And then the other missiles came in. Let me tell you how Dr. Kalam it is. Whenever we were launching the Prudhvi or Agni, we were becoming one of the six or seven nations in the world who have such capabilities of the ballistic missiles. So we used to say that we have become one of the six nations, one of the seven nations, when you launch the first Prithvi or Prithvi 2 or Agni or Givan and things like that. And Kalam used to say that, hey funny guys, you have been becoming one of the six nations, one of the seven nations. When will you give me, I am the first one to develop this. This is his dream. I think during his tenure itself, he has seen that the India Russia have joined hands, developed a missile called Brahmos. The name itself, Brahmos, has come out of the two rivers flowing in these two nations the river Brahmaputra here and river Moscow there, combining and giving a similar name like Indian, one of the Indians most popular weapon, Brahmos. And Brahmos is a joint development wherein 
some parts were developed by Russians and some parts were developed by the Indian side, integrated. And that was the only supersonic cruise missile in the world at the time. So, developed the first of its kind weapon system, even though it's a collaboration, but it's a joint effort. And that's how the weapon has been developed, which has become one of the very important weapons of the armed forces today. All the three forces, Army, Air Force, Navy, number of systems have been produced, beautiful models. Leadership of Dr. Kalam, Dr. Sultan Pillay, and many others who have contributed to that. And I had the opportunity to work on that system. Months together staying in Russia, developing critical systems and showing the capability that we are no less than to anybody in the systems and technologies development. Later, you must have seen the success of the anti-tank missile NARC. One of the missiles or maybe the only missile in the world having that type of a capability of that ranges in a fire and forget mode. The helicopter launch Helena missile the Astra, which is one of the very important weapons, which is an air to air missile, which has a 100 kilometers range. And then the country has witnessed one of the important programs called the ballistic missile defense. If an enemy launches a ballistic missile, you are able to attack that missile in the mid air by a direct hit. And you are able to neutralize that weapon. We are one of the four nations or five nations in the world who have de developed such a capability. Number of trials were done, which were very successful, real trials, launching one missile from the sea and launching another missile from the land, and then seeing that it is attacked in the mid air and destroying that missile. These capabilities have been demonstrated one of the finest weapons, having tremendous technologies and state-of-the-art technologies. At the same time, when the missiles program started, the main battle tank Arjun, the work of that tank started. First time, you are developing a tank in the country. There are only five nations who have developed their own main battle tank by the tank. And we are the sixth nation. People have worked very hard. Months together, they stayed in the deserts, hot temperature, dust, and developed the main battle tank and became the sixth nation in the world who have developed the main battle tank. One of the Beautiful tanks having tremendous features, many features which have been combined, which were there in two, three tanks have all been integrated into one tank. The CVRDA, which is there in Chennai, is the establishment which has developed that and then brought in lots of improvements. The Ordnance Factory in Chennai, Audi, has produced these tanks and delivered to the armed forces. Another major program was taken up simultaneously, a little later, probably early um, 90s or late 80s, the light combat aircraft program. This is one of the important programs in the aeronautics of the country. It has actually yielded tremendous results, not just coming up with LCA. Many aeronautic industries have come up. The academia, Many people have developed lots of interest in aeronautics. Started coming up in a big way in that areas. And the light combat aircraft has been developed in the country. People say it's little delayed and all that. For a country without any um, background, without any ecosystem, we took about 25 years. There are many, most of the countries have taken about 18 to 20 years or 22 years also many advanced nations. I don't think this country in that type of a background taking about 25 years is not 
uh, too much delayed or anything. And it's one of the fantastic aircrafts. I've seen the consecutive eight chiefs who have flown that said, this is one of the fantastic aircrafts. Hindustan Aeronautics Limited is producing it. Aeronautical Development Agency in the Bangalore is the design agency. And the IOC is cleared, the FOC is cleared, IOC aircrafts have been made, the FOC aircrafts are being made, and now the Air Force is ready to give its the largest ever quantities wise the order of the aircraft, the 83 numbers, which will be coming through very fast, very, very soon, and the aircrafts will be coming out of HL sooner. This is one of the fantastic systems. And today, the capability has so much gone up in the country. Industries have come up so well. The academia is able to do so much of design help for you and is able to give a lot of research inputs to you that the Aeronautical Development Agency is talking about any new aircrafts within four to five years will be able to roll out. This is the confidence which has come in the country. Many industries. Today, look at the type of industries. We have many industries. We have about 1,800 industries in the country who are working at system and subsystem level with us today. There are 1,000 industries which have taken the technology transfer from us. 1,000 industries. And when you talk about component level and other things, the type 3 industries, we have almost about 8,000 industries. So total becoming up close to about 10,000 industries today working for defense of the country with the DRD. Many industries have been developed. They have been working together. They have come up in a big way. They are now talking of they will be able to develop subsystem. They will be able to develop systems. And people who are industries which were in the BTP, as I said, built to print, today they have become built to specifications, meaning you give the specification, they are able to come up. And many other areas we are developing the country simultaneously. We have developed many radars, so many radars, varieties of radars for Army, Air Force, Navy, which have been developed and delivered in a big way. And today we are having the capability to develop any type of a radar in the country. The industries are geared up. They are able to produce a lot of parts for the radars today. And similarly, we are very strong in the electronic warfare systems. We are able to develop varieties of electronic warfare systems, a laboratory in uh, Hyderabad called DLRL, a radars, a laboratory called LRD in Bangalore, they are able to develop. We are strong in torpedoes. The laboratory in Vishakapatnam NSTL has developed multiple torpedoes which have been inducted into the Indian Navy. The laboratory in Cochin NPOL is again has developed many technologies in the sonars and they have become completely self-reliant in the area of sonars. We are very confident and self-reliant in the communication systems. And also, we have developed the artillery guns. You must have heard, Honorable Prime Minister also declared that we have made the world's longest range artillery 155mm gun, having close to about 50 kilometers range. And with two industries, the laboratory in uh, Pune, ARDE, along with the two industries have developed this. So many things have been uh, developed and we have become confident in many of the areas. We have become self-reliant in many of these areas. Industries have come up, academic institutes have come up. Today we have about 275 academic institutes working with us. Many academic institutes. We give lots of projects to them. We keep working with us. We have almost about 1,000 crores worth of projects running with academic institutes today. We have established centers of excellence. Those days, as I said in the 80s, we have established a center called JITP in uh, IIC, Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore, working with those professors there on many of our schemes and guidance algorithms and control systems and that. We had similarly a close ties with Jadavpur University, Kalakata Engineering College, and many other places. Now today, we 
We have a center of excellence in IIT Delhi. We have a center of excellence in IIT Mumbai. We have a center of excellence in IIT Chennai. We have in uh, Calcutta. We have in uh, so Central University Hyderabad. We have in Bharatiya University. We have here in um, Jammu University. We have in uh, Mizoram University for all the northeastern universities. Many things have come up working on different advanced technologies. The scientists and the professors work together in the centers and work for the futuristic technologies. The industries are groomed up. So, having come up to this stage, still, you all know that we are one of the largest importers of arms and weapons and equipment. There are a lot more to be done. A lot of things need to be done. So, a lot of New new schemes are coming up, encouraging the industry, encouraging bankers, and encouraging the academic institutes, trying to have many systems. The friends, one thing I'd like to mention, till now India has been, most of the areas, you have been a technology follower. Meaning, somewhere an advanced nation develops a, a technology, and you start developing it, and within about five to ten years, you will also develop the technology. You have been following. The trend has to change. You can't be following. You also have to develop first of its kind technologies. You also have to develop systems and technologies which are state of the art, which are in the similar timelines at least. And that's the time the country will flourish. Many things. One sea change, what I'm seeing in the last four to five years is lots of youngsters are coming into the defense domain. I've seen many people, startups, who are coming to us saying that I will work on this problem, I'll work on that problem, give me support. I've seen youngsters who are just about 23, 24 years old working on our propulsion systems, making rocket motors, burning their hands. One of the youngsters has burnt his hand also while working on that. They've taken projects worth, crores worth, and developing state of the art propulsion technologies and engines, green propellants, electric propulsion systems. Youngsters of the age of 24, 25. Youngsters working on high temperature materials, high temperature composite rocket motor casings. So, varieties of things. People who are coming up saying that we will work for launching even satellites. A lot of startups. Earlier, most of these startups and youngsters used to be only in the ICTA, Information Communication Technologies. Now the trend has changed. People are coming towards defense technologies. Many people. So we have number of schemes started. We have a date to dream contest. Dr. Kalam used to tell, dream, dream, dream. Dream that I'll become a famous engineer, I'll become a famous scientist, I'll become a famous professor, I'll become a famous doctor, whatever it is, anything, any field you take. And then the dream makes you don't sleep again. Meaning, you'll be working for that dream to become a reality. You will start working hard. Once you have a goal set for you in your life, will be working towards that goal. Your sincerity, hard work, dedication, dedication, motivation, commitment, this is what is required. No famous personality in the world has become just like a famous personality. There have been tremendous amount of hard work, sincerity, dedication. If you are actually dedicated to your problem, always you will get flashes, ideas. You are continuously thinking about that particular issue, problem, 
you will always get ideas. What you need is the dedication, the sincerity, the hard work. That is what actually makes your dreams a reality. Dr. Kalam, if he has become such a popular person, it is his tremendous amount of dedication. Day and night, continuously thinking about the organization, the technologies, the development, how do I do that, how do I do this, how do I do this. Being a missile scientist, working for, based on the materials what you have developed, the equipment what is required for the handicapped people, a lightweight equipment for the people who have polio and other type of diseases. Working for stunts, working with Nijam's Institute of Medical Sciences, that time with Dr. Somaraju making the stunt, asking the scientists to develop a low-cost peacemaker. See the thinking. You always need to have sort of a thinking. What can I do? What should I do? How I will look? develop these systems and that type of a goal, dream you have, you will be able to work hard for that dedicatedly and then ideas keep coming, you will be able to develop it. Wonders, the youngsters of today have tremendous capabilities and potential. The type of ideas what they are coming in the day to dream contest, what we are putting for innovative ideas, there are many ideas which are coming up, which we have filtered out and we are giving awards and rewards to that. And if somebody has an idea which can be converted into product form, we are ready to support that. We have a scheme called Technology Development Fund, EDF, which actually identifies number of products which need to be indigenized. The products which are coming from outside in a big way, these products need to be indigenized. And we are putting it in our websites. And then somebody comes out with idea that I'll develop it. And if we see that it is a feasible one, we are going to fund total development. So number of industries we are funding like that. Even an idea which comes out from you also will be taken up and that also if it is a viable thing, it will be funded. The scheme which in the MOD has come out with ITEX, promoting innovation in youngsters, let it be drones, UAVs, many things. Today you have tremendous opportunity. Artificial intelligence is going to play a tremendous role. I think now onwards, products, whichever product comes out, will always have an artificial intelligence in it. I'm not just talking about different side alone. Any product, whatever it comes, will have artificial intelligence. So youngsters, you people, you have a tremendous role to play in that. What is important is our product has to be innovative. Our product has to be state of the art. Then it has a tremendous potential both within the country and out there. So we need to work for that type of way thing and it is in your hands that the country will be able to come out with many of the parts and from being largest one of the largest importers of defense equipment arms and ammunition we should become one of the largest exporters of defense equipment how this nation can become prosperous one is becoming self-reliant, meaning whatever equipment I use, it is made in the country, it is designed in the country, and we developed in the country is one thing where I am self-reliant. This is not just made in the country, that equipment, that weapon has to be an advanced system. How you actually will be able to protect your bodies? How you will be able to safeguard your nation when you have your armed forces having a weapon which is actually a better than our adversaries weapons. We need to develop such weapons. One of the very important things. Second, when the equipment is real state of the art and it is out of advanced 
technologies, then we will be able to supply it to the world. When can you supply your equipment to the, to the entire world? You can supply only when it is the state of the art technologies, it is an advanced technology based product, and it is produced with quality, meaning it has got reliable equipment. And also, the cost wise, it is lower. These are all what three major important things. Then, the entire world will buy from you. If an industry here has to flourish, I don't think he will be able to flourish for long run just by supplying to our own country. We need to supply to the entire world. If we supply to the entire world, You have to have these three parameters. Your equipment has to be in state of the art or advanced technology product. It is to be level product, meaning you maintain the quality, and it has to be lower cost. So this is feasible only when in the country all of us work together. The academia, the industry, and the R&D organizations like See, one DRDO cannot work on everything. See, we have other uh, scientific organizations in the country, primarily strategic organizations, the Indian Space Research Organization, the Atomic Energy, and of course DRDO. These are the strategic uh, R&D organizations in the country. ISRO is doing a fantastic job in the field of space. And atomic energy is doing an excellent job in the area of atomic energy. Lots of systems coming out, lots of systems are being published, a lot of things. But then when it comes to DRDO, it's a different ball grade. Firstly, the span of work is tremendous. Right from clothing, food, the shoes, small communication systems, vehicles. From the small arms, guns, pistols, onwards, you're talking about submarines, you're talking about uh, tanks, you're talking about helicopters, you're talking about aircrafts, you're talking about missiles, you're talking about advanced missiles, talking about radars, you're talking about sonars, you're talking about torpedoes, you're talking about guns, you're talking about ammunition, you're talking about artificial intelligence. Many things, you talk about anything is there. So your breadth of the technologies is very high. And then we have to meet the user aspirations. There is a user who looks with certain amount of specifications, certain type of quality, uh, reliability, certain type of conditions. You need to work in the desert at plus 55 and 60 degrees temperature. And in Chiasin, you have to work in minus 40. So extreme temperature conditions, extreme weather conditions, extreme conditions need to work in all those areas. So your spread is tremendous. You need to work on all this. There are about 54 laboratories in the country which are working in all these areas. And we need more and more youngsters to work in this area. You must be knowing Honorable Prime Minister himself who has tremendous faith in the youth of the country has directed DRDO to establish five laboratories wherein all our youngsters below 35 years old, including the director of the laboratory. So we have established five laboratories, one in IIT Mumbai, one in IIT Chennai, one in uh, uh, Calcutta, one in Bangalore, and one in uh, Hyderabad, different areas frontier areas, technologies, quantum technologies, artificial intelligence, smart materials, cognitive technologies, asymmetric technologies, and Honorable Prime Minister himself has dedicated to the nation. He completely all filled with below 35 years old. Director of the laboratory has got powers like any other big laboratory of LRD or DLRL or DRDL or any other laboratory, all the same powers. So people are working now. This is the type of opportunities are being given to the youth. 
and in the coming uh, in the coming probably few months you will see many schemes which are coming out which will support the youngsters and support the NPC. Industry cannot be just a producing house, a production house. It can't be a BTP. It has to be a BTS, built to specification industry. Most of the industries, if they are able to produce many things, then organization like DRDO can concentrate on advanced technologies. We are saying that what industry can do, DRDO should not do. DRDO to concentrate on advanced technologies. Industry should be working on most of the developments. And in fact, we look at industry to carry out research initiatives, a narrow area, a specific area, work in that, try to do some amount of research in that, good amount of research, I up with an academic institute, use DRDO laboratories, use DRDO's test facilities, come out with a product. That product will be useful to the country and you will be able to supply it to the entire world. There are many industries in the country today, which I know, which are doing like this. They are doing research in the niche area. They are able to come out with specific products. They are supplying to the entire Europe. They are supplying to the United States of America. And it has come to a stage where our defense industry is able to acquire defense industries outside. This is one of the important things. The youngsters who have established a couple of them whom I know, uh, there is a startup in Bangalore where the French government, French industries wanted to invest in that company, the type of work what they are doing. So this is the type of uh, development what is going on in the country today. A lot of youngsters which are able to come up. So we are here to support them, to work with them. And that is the type wherein academic institutes are able to do basic research in new and newer areas and some amount of applied research. Are in the organizations like DRDO working on applied research and translational research and industries and startups in the country are able to take from translational research to a product and producing them with quality, sustained quality. That's always I use it. The first product to be, after 10 years, what you develop, 1 million product or 10 million product also having the same quality and also doing research in niche areas. The type of support schemes which are coming up, systems which are coming to support the people, the processes which have been simplified, regularly they're being when our new DPP has been put on the website now, simplifying further processes, taking inputs from all of the people. And so it is very important. We are also going to take lots of youngsters into the organization in some form or other, which form we are working out. A lot of opportunities to the industry. Uh, youngsters, we are giving if I say that we are working with 275 academic institutes, each project, even if I take about three or four people, that means I have about more than 1,000 uh, students or researchers working with us through these projects directly. We are almost giving about four to 5,000 people a year the BTEC and MTEC projects working in our organizations. We are also give, going to give this year onwards many apprenticeship programs for the ITI, Diploma on BTEC people on payment also. Lots of things. Now, we are working with the Ministry of Human Resources and Development. 500 PhD students are going to work in the audio laboratories on defense problems. That means there will be 500 theses coming in the country on defense related problems. So this is how there are many opportunities. We have made our test facilities open. People can use these test facilities and DRDO facilities. And when you are developing a system, 
use our facilities wherever they are available and you can develop your system. As I said, a lot of funding schemes like PDF and some more will be coming up which will be giving a lot of opportunities to you. And we are open actually if you are working in academic institute, take more projects from us. Whether it is core research or a developmental one or innovative one, we are ready to fund that academic institutes where you can work on that and come out. So there are a number of schemes which we are working out to encourage the youth of the country to work for defense R&D, come out with the defense related products. It's only that you people should be having the zeal to work for this nation. This nation will become powerful only when you people come out with the advanced technology based products, the state of the art technology based products. And that is the time we will have weapons which are the state of the art, which are better than adversaries, and we will be able to supply to the world. We will be able to get a lot of foreign exchange. That's how the country becomes prosperous. If this country has to become prosperous, we need to develop advanced technologies and that's all in your hands. We are all there to support you. We are all there to give you all adequate facilities whatnot. We are also trying to simplify all our processes to make it more comfortable to you. And I'm sure that you will be able to use the opportunities and you can advise us also what more you need. What more we need to do? What more need to be simplified? How we can work together better? What are the schemes? You can advise us, we are ready to take up. We are ready to implement them and working together with you. And so, friends, the youngsters of this country, I appeal to you, set a goal for yourself. Work towards that goal. With sincerity, hard work, dedication, commitment, motivation, and you will be able to achieve. You have the necessary strengths in you. You have the necessary brain and capabilities in you. We all have experienced this. If see, friends, I am trying to tell you one thing. This country has academic institutes which are ranked around 200, 300 in the world. We don't have an academic institute which is ranked in the first hundred and many of them go outside abroad and with these people who are in this country we are able to develop one of the five nations, one of the six nations and you are able to do an anti-satellite test becoming the fourth nation in the world going and hitting a satellite in the lower orbit with a relative velocity of 11 kilometers per second, you are able to develop a BMW program, you are able to develop aircraft, you are able to develop a tank, you are able to develop many of these various weapons, and you are able to develop a supersonic cruise missile in this. Imagine if we have 20 academic institutes in the first 100 of this country, and we are able to make the level of all of you go up. And if you are working with that zeal for this country, I think in every area this country will be leading the world. I don't have any doubts. You have that inner strength in you. Arise, awake, and use all the inner strengths of you to develop advanced technologies for this country and make this country prosperous. A, a great nation. Thank you very much for listening to me. And I thank once again the Times of India and others who have organized and implemented this opportunity. And all the best to you. God bless you. Jai Hind.